Morning. Morning, my name is uh, Gonzalo Villena. I'm the director of the English Language Institute here at the College of Staten Island. And uh, welcome, uh, this is uh, it's gonna be an English, um, an info session about um, English tests, about TOEFL. All right, so first of all, the purpose of the English test should be um, for an English language learning. Maybe you just want, maybe you just need it for, uh, uh, maybe you need it for an exam. Maybe you need it for immigration reasons. Um, so, so for you need you first need to know what kind of um, what kind of uh, tests you need it for. So that's that's one of the first one of the first steps you need to you need to do. So what kind of uh, purpose is it is for? All right. So if it's for if it's for English. Um, of course, um, uh, for just for English language learning, there is no problem. All right, so that's that's fine. Um, and then the, if the next reason is usually that's the most popular, which is university application for a school or college application, the universities, uh, especially in the U.S., ask for um, uh, this test, uh, an English test, to apply for the school, for any academic program, even if it's uh, undergraduate or graduate, um, they usually ask for uh, university application. So that's one of the requirements. And uh, so uh, one of the questions that they ask me is, if I'm a US resident or a US citizen, can I take the test? And of course, yeah, uh, as long as maybe your education was outside the US and you don't have the English skills, of course, uh, you will you will need um, maybe it's not an, uh, uh, one of the requirements as a document, but you will definitely need uh, to take uh, a TOEFL course, to take a TOEFL test, so you kind of uh, try to measure your English level, and that would be enough to be ready for uh, a degree. So when you start um, any degree, if you have been prepared with this type of test, this will help you later for assignments for work for tests to write better and uh, so definitely definitely the um, the citizenship does not matter um there are other reasons as well academic research there are a lot of scholars that usually travel to the us to canada to australia to the uk and they will definitely need to take a test uh because sometimes that's one of the uh, requirements to apply uh for any exchange any research abroad, all right? So um, that could be one of the academic reasons. Um, sometimes some jobs uh, uh, or some job interviews, they require that you um, have, uh, not just say that you study English or that you speak English, but that you also show it with any test. So uh, for example, here, um, there are some medical um positions that they require an english test or an english course and even a test uh with that it's uh related to medical to um to medicine and uh so you need to take a special test so and so it's not just the language but also technical language so you need to uh, be um aware of what type of uh, English tests you need for work reasons. And uh, some immigration uh, requirements uh, in some countries, they might ask you for an English test in order to, uh, if you're applying for a work visa, for example, I don't know, it depends on the country, and uh, they might ask you for an English test. So uh, first of all, the reason. So what type of test should I take? That could be a good question, right? Uh, so what's a good test for me? What what kind of test I need? So um, I would say, again, it depends on your reasons. If it's academic reasons or work reasons, you should know that there are different tests. So one of the most popular tests around the world is TOEFL. So uh, TOEFL has different types of tests. And uh, but this is the the company is called ETS, and uh, they this is the company that runs that administers. Uh, and there is another type of company that also works with TOEFL that um, runs 
the TOEFL test, different types of it. And then the second one, that would be IELTS. Okay, so both are two different companies and two different um, tests, but uh, they have a lot of similarities. There's a lot, um, both have listening comprehension, they have uh, written expressions like grammar, a lot of vocabulary questions, and uh, a lot of reading comprehension questions. Um, and uh, if you ask me which one is more difficult, that would depend on your level, on the level of English you have, that you are that you have at the moment of the test. But TOEFL is the most popular. And that means that more universities accept TOEFL than other tests. Usually in the US, TOEFL is the most popular among all the universities. And IELTS have been uh, slowly accepted in different universities if you don't have TOEFL. So some universities might tell you, if you don't have TOEFL, IELTS, it's uh, the second choice you have. So IELTS is also accepted in many universities in the US, but it's sometimes is the, uh, the most popular in other countries. Like for example, in Canada, more universities might accept more IELTS than TOEFL. Or if you go to Australia, right and uh, or the uk they might have a different test um but those two are the most popular toffel and ielts and um they are two different companies they are not the same um but they both are english tests and then you have uh another one which like for example cambridge cambridge is a very popular um and the cambridge tests are very popular uh just not just to go to the UK, but also it's accepted and used in many institutions outside the UK, outside England, in Latin America, in Asia, and uh, in many schools, uh, high schools and uh, universities uh, in non-English speaking countries. They, there are different types of Cambridge tests and they, and they usually use that too. And uh, so, it, and the Cambridge test, again, evaluates grammar, vocabulary, reading, listening, but it's a, just a different test. It might not be as popular as TOEFL, but for example, if you want to go to England, uh, you will find that more universities accept Cambridge more than TOEFL. And then there are other probably other companies that have also been growing and have been accepted by other universities and like for example the Michigan exams um so it's not an it's not easier <laughs> right than TOEFL that's for sure uh, it's it has the it evaluates again your your reading skills uh, your knowledge with grammar and vocabulary so um but yes um you should uh be aware that Michigan is uh, another another test that you you should be aware of. So um, so with that, uh, you should know that um, but that yeah, uh, their Michigan test is one of them, um, and uh, it's run by the University of Michigan. Yeah, they have a special area that is in charge of it, and um, and. Uh, it's it's not an easier test. That's that's for sure. Uh, some universities, some institutions use those types of tests, uh, Michigan or Cambridge, and even English language uh, centers outside the U.S., outside Canada, like in Latin America, they use this test to evaluate. Even when teachers apply for a job uh, in those countries, they even use this test. So you should be aware that these tests are around and are used for other purposes. Now, uh, Duolingo, uh, Duolingo, for example, it started as an app, right? It's an, it's an English language, English learning app, but then they, uh, launched this English test uh, and it became so popular that now a lot of universities in the U.S. are accepting the Duolingo official English test, not the app, not that if you pass the, the little test on the app, but the Duolingo English test has 
uh, started to be accepted in many universities, even in the US, as an English requirement. So um, then the difference is which one I should take. Should I take then TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo? Uh, for example, in, in our university at the College of Staten Island, they accept those three. TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo English test. And uh, you can take any, doesn't matter. Um, it means that the university has evaluated that those three tests are um, proficient and are uh, accepted. And then they have uh, a good evaluation in the test and are accepted by the university. So um, also, if you're applying to any university, try to see which other tests are accepted besides TOEFL, which is the most popular, okay? So, so these are the, the most popular tests around the market. There are a lot more that are official tests. So you can take, you can take a look uh, which other tests are also there and accepted and used. And again, remember to, uh, remember to, to know what kind, of, what kind of tests you need and for what purpose. So let me tell you a little bit about, uh, about TOEFL. Uh, these are the two types of TOEFL tests that are popular. Um, TOEFL is the general name of all the types of tests. TOEFL has a lot of different types of TOEFL test. The most popular, the most accepted is the TOEFL IBT, which is TOEFL, uh, it's the internet or internet based test and uh, you have to go to an authorized TOEFL center. Uh, it's not just in the, in the US, it's in a lot of countries and usually it's, uh, it's inside an ESL center. Uh, sometimes uh, it works with Education USA um, kind of related centers, um, but it could be by any other authorized center. Uh, in the U.S., there are different authorized centers that you can only take the TOEFL IBT um, and that you have to go, you have to take the test over there, but it's an internet-based test. So you need to go, you need to pay for it. Um, in different countries, it has different prices, different costs, and different fees. So you should be aware that you will need to pay for this test. And it could be $200, 180, 220, 250. Uh, it depends on the center, and they might give you other tests, other fees. So that, but that's the most official and that's the most accepted test around all the U.S. colleges, U.S. universities, to apply to any degree, undergraduate or graduate degree. Um, and they, um, and then we can see the the scores. But uh, that's one of the most accepted. And then there's another TOEFL test, very popular, which is the ITP test, which is the institutional test. Uh, and that's used internally in English language centers uh, that they give you an English program, but the last day or the last days, um, there is a TOEFL test and uh, you don't have to go to an authorized center. It's authorized by TOEFL but that with this test, it's as official as the TOEFL IBT. And if they take that, it can be used internally to apply to the school where you are. So for example, in our English Language Institute, we have a TOEFL course, a TOEFL preparation course, TOEFL test preparation course. And the last day we have a TOEFL ITP test, for example. And that evaluates exactly the same as the TOEFL IBT. It evaluates your listening skills, evaluates your reading comprehension skills, evaluates the um, grammar, your vocabulary, your all the written expression knowledge. Um, um, and then the score. If you get the score, you can you can be accepted to an undergraduate or graduate degree, not just our school at the College of Staten Island, but you can also um, be accepted at any CUNY school. So uh, even though you might have studied at Staten Island English, 
you can apply to a CUNY school in Brooklyn or in the Bronx or in Queens or in Manhattan. So that's the use, the good use of TOEFL ITP. So it's an official TOEFL score, but it's used just internally. That's with it. Now, how much, uh, what is the score? The score, um, according to, um, for uh, an advanced level, that is usually is, um, um, graded or coded as C1, the C1 level that would be considered advanced. And that's kind of the comparison. So in the TOEFL internet-based test, in the TOEFL IBT, uh, the maximum score is 120. And in the TOEFL ITP, the equivalence is 677. And the IELTS, the equivalent number, that would be nine, nine points. That is usually uh, accepted to be considered uh, for any graduate program at any university. Yes, of course, those are the maximum scores. And or if you get a B2 score between 79, 80 points in TOEFL IBT or 550 in TOEFL ITP or 6.5 in IELTS, that is also usually accepted by a graduate program. Uh, some universe, some schools might ask you a little bit higher score in TOEFL ITP. They might ask you instead of 550, they might ask you 600, for example. So this may vary, of course. Uh, that depends on the school. Uh, the schools decide which exact score they need. So this is just a reference, right? But for example, um, here at CSI, at the College of Staten Island, we accept 550. Uh, but there, for example, there is a business school program, a graduate, that they don't take 550. They accept studying at 600, for example. So you might need a higher TOEFL ITP score, okay? And if you got B1, which is a lower intermediate level, uh, that is usually accepted for undergraduate degrees to get a bachelor's degree. So in TOEFL IBT, that would be between 45 and 46 points. Uh, TOEFL I ITP, that would be 450. And the IELTS test, that would be between 5, 5.5 to be accepted for any undergraduate program. But again, check with your school, check with the university what exact score they need to accept you. All right, there we go. So what is in the test? I guess we already said that you might have listening questions, listening, listening comprehension questions. You're gonna have something called written expression, which is grammar and vocabulary. And uh, a lot of uh, find the error or underline the error and uh, those types of questions. And, uh, and then the reading part. Usually, uh, well, for a lot of my students, they always tell me the majority say that uh, listening is the most difficult uh, because uh, it goes very fast for some of them, the conversations. <clears throat> so you need to practice a lot of listening if you if this is the most the hardest part for you. Um, but for example, for the TOEFL ITP test that are um, around 40 questions of listening and uh, you only have 12 seconds to answer each listening question and you cannot go back so you need to be very fast it's not a good tip to take notes I, I that's not my advice do not take notes while you are taking uh, while you are doing the listening part no no uh, and uh, because that distracts you too much from the listening, uh, from the script you're going to hear, and uh, that's not very useful. So that's for listening. And, uh, and then the written expression, the grammar and vocabulary, you're probably going to have between 45 and 50 questions. And then reading, you will probably have four, five readings, uh, different types of readings, different ones. And you will probably have between four and six questions each. So be ready to read about technical uh, topics, not very simple readings. Uh, you might have readings about 
the ocean or science or medicine with very difficult vocabulary. So be very careful with that. So my tips here, um, try to find, there are a lot of free websites that offer help with, uh, with TOEFL. Um, there are some that you need to pay, but there are a lot of web, uh, free websites, but be careful which sites you take. Uh, try to check the, the TOEFL website. There, there is free resources there that you can use. Um, there are yeah, hundreds of books around that you can, uh, but if you want my advice, uh, try to find Longman, Pearson, uh, TOEFL, uh, books. They have good TOEFL um, preparation books there. Or you can sign up for a course. There are a lot of courses online, in person that prepare uh, students to uh, for TOEFL or for IELTS, for test taking. So uh, feel free to, um, to take a course. Uh, and uh, for example, we have uh, not just an, an ESL program, an intensive English program, but we also have a TOEFL, pro, a TOEFL course is included. And the TOEFL ITP test is included in your tuition fee. So you can sign up for a, for a course that includes TOEFL. So for example, if you want to apply for a university in the US, you have two routes. You either take the the official TOEFL IBT test in your home country, or you can come to the US, you sign up for an English program that includes TOEFL preparation, that includes a TOEFL test, that helps you apply or helps you go to any academic program in the university that you are interested in, all right? Then, uh, uh, this is probably one of the um, hardest tips to follow, but you need to learn about test strategies, test techniques, uh, because the, that helps you go faster. Uh, so it's not like any other test you might take in university or in your school, uh, but you need to learn some strategies, how to listen, how to read, not just read every single word there, because you have to also be accurate, reading and listening faster. And you need some techniques on how to read the paragraphs, uh, how to listen to specific information, what you should focus on. Um, you should read the questions first, or you should read the questions after you read, after you listen. So there are some strategies, some techniques, especially for, for test taking uh, programs. Uh, for example, in our TOEFL course, you will learn those strategies. You will learn those techniques, um, how to read better, how to read faster, and uh, how to answer faster and with confidence. And then go to an authorized testing center. Make sure it's, an, it's authorized by TOEFL, by IELTS. Um, by Duolingo or by Michigan, uh, be careful because there are a lot of non-authorized testing centers, even though they tell you it's TOEFL, it's an official TOEFL. Um, be very careful. I learned, I met some students that brought their TOEFL test, that, but it was just a stamp that somebody made up and uh, it was not an official TOEFL test. All right, so those are my three tips that you might want to uh, follow. And uh, that's it, all right? And uh, so if you want to find out about our TOEFL test, our TOEFL program, uh, our intensive English program, you can uh, contact us and uh, we'll tell you everything about, about TOEFL and, um, and help you with your, with your plans, with your... Um, and whatever you need for your um, goals, okay? If it's academic, if it's for work, if it's for immigration, we might be able to help you, all right? So thank you for watching and feel free to write your questions. Uh, if you're not watching this live or later, feel free to um, um, just uh, write your comments, all right? Okay, so thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.